For decades, Intel has been the most popular choice for CPUs, powering more than half the world's computers. But when they released their first GPU in 1998, the i740 was so poorly received that they literally quit making GPUs for 24 years. Yes, it was actually that bad. But after more than two decades, Intel launched their new fastest GPU, the Arc B580. And Intel claims that it can handle both 1440p gaming at over 60 FPS and ray tracing, all for just $250. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, there's only one way to find out. To see if the Arc B580 really lives up to Intel's claims, I decided to buy it with my own money. Surprisingly, I managed to get it for its retail price of just 249 US dollars. But you might be wondering why it took me so long to actually get my hands on it, especially since the B580 was released back in December of last year. Well, only weeks after release, the B580 ran into serious issues. When paired with weaker CPUs, even as strong as the Ryzen 7600 non-X, performance was abysmal. When you pair both GPUs in the exact same game, but with an older CPU, the B580 gets absolutely destroyed. There was actually a title where even the 7600 caused a slight dip in the 1% lows. And that completely defeats the purpose of a budget GPU, because if you need an expensive CPU just to make it usable, what's the point? Four months later, with new drivers, I'm hoping they fix things, because if they have, this might be the best GPU under $300. Well, at least until you consider the used market, but we'll talk about that later. First, I wanted to see if Intel's fastest GPU can actually deliver the 1440p 60fps experience they promised. So to put Intel's claims to the test, I tried 10 different games at 1440p to see if the Arc B580 could prove itself as a true 1440p graphics card. Starting with one of the lighter games on the list, Counter-Strike 2 on the 1440p high preset scores an average of 170 FPS. But apart from my horrible gameplay, the thing that stands out the most is the very high VRAM usage, with the game eating up nearly 11GB of VRAM, so it's good to know that it's already in a league of its own compared to the 8GB 4060 and 7600. But since the B580 has 12GB of VRAM, I had to put it to the test with the most VRAM hungry games I own. At 1440p very high settings, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart was using more VRAM than the B580 comes with, and still averaged 68 FPS without any stuttering or slowdowns, even in the most chaotic fights with the craziest visual effects. In one of the heaviest titles of this video, Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p high settings also runs smoothly at about 69 FPS. In the heaviest game of this video, Black Myth Wukong pushed this GPU to its absolute limits. Keep in mind, the 4090 only gets 70 FPS at 1440p max settings in this game, so the numbers we got with the B580 will not impress you. I was only getting 70 FPS with the B580 at low settings, which sounds decent compared to the 4090, until you realize it's actually 864p upscaled to 1440p goes to show just how demanding these Unreal Engine 5 games can get. However, these are some of the newest games that I own, so how does it stack up against some older games? In Rise of the Tomb Raider, at the very high preset with pure hair maxed out, the game still runs very well between 80 and 115 FPS depending on where you are. At the high preset, Shadow of the Tomb Raider ran smoothly at 105 FPS at high settings, only dropping to 90 FPS on the highest preset. In cutscenes, close-ups, and just less demanding areas in general though, you can expect really smooth performance at around 100 FPS even on the highest settings. At 1440p high, control ran around 70 FPS. In Fragpunk, the newest game in this video, it ran at 100 FPS at native 1440p high. Elden Ring, my most played game in the last week, performed perfectly at 1440p max settings, staying at 60 FPS with minimal power usage, making it a perfect choice for this game. But that's where the good news ends, because I ran into some pretty big problems in this very last game, which was coincidentally the first game I tried playing on the B580. In Uncharted 4, the FPS was actually really solid for the price, between 80 and 90. But as you could probably tell, the recording looked completely unwatchable. Luckily, just disabling hags in my graphics settings fixed that, but there were still problems that you will not see in the recording. Every 30 seconds, my second screen would flash white, and my main monitor had strange black squares, similar to the black squares that you'll see with a dying GPU. Strangely, this only happened in-game. It seemed like once the GPU was under a certain amount of stress, both my screens just start freaking out. So I thought maybe the newest drivers were just bad. And for once, I was right about something, because rolling back to the second latest driver fixed all my problems instantly. And as you saw just now, most of the games I tested in 1440p went very smoothly on these drivers. So for the
the most part, it seems that Intel wasn't lying about the 1440p performance. But what about the ray tracing? Intel made some bold claims about the ray tracing capabilities of their flagship GPU, so it would be a crime to not talk about that next. But if we learned anything from Nvidia's four generations of RTX cards, it's that ray tracing performance will almost always be a disappointment. You ready? You, you can watch my hand. You can watch my hand. Okay, I'm gonna move it. That's what we're, that's that's what we're seeing. So will Intel be any better, or will they let us down too? Let's start with a lighter example of ray tracing with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Ironically, the game only features ray trace shadows, and even then, it still drops our frames by 50%, despite the game looking virtually identical to what it was before. But it gets worse, because I forgot to tell you one thing about what Intel said about the RT on this GPU. A huge part of their marketing relies on their version of DLSS Super Resolution, XCSS. And to hit that advertised 1440p ray tracing performance, Intel expects you to run XCSS in performance mode which means the game is actually rendering at just 720p. So naturally, the rest of the native 1440p benchmarks didn't hold up nearly as well. In control, with high settings and the lowest ray tracing preset, the ARC can't even reach 50fps when we were previously achieving 70 without RT. Although native 1440p ray tracing performance is pretty underwhelming, it's important to remember that the ARC B580 is cheaper than both the 4060 and 7600, both of which were built for 1080p. And when we drop the resolution, Intel's GPU can actually handle ray tracing, and compared to the 4060, the gaming experience you're getting with the B580 will almost always be better. Now at this point, we are all aware that the Intel Arc B580 is a very strong competitor to AMD and Nvidia's current generation graphics cards. So what if we compare it to something that's already proven itself as the best budget option under $300? And of course, I'm talking about none other than the GTX 1080 Ti. Despite costing only an average price of $170, it's able to keep up and even outperform GPUs like the RTX 3060, RTX 4060, and RX 7600. So is the B580 worth the $80 premium over the 1080 Ti? Absolutely not. Earlier I mentioned the issue where the B580 struggles to run properly with weaker CPUs, and somehow even my 7600X still wasn't good enough for it. You'll see that it wins in every game except for Rocket League and Fortnite, and that's because as the frame rates get higher, the games rely more on the CPU to queue in more frames. As a result, the B580 loses its lead against the 1080 Ti, and overall it's only about 18% better in average FPS, while being about 5% worse in the 1% lows. Sure, if we turned on ray tracing, the B580 would be miles ahead, but that doesn't change the bigger issue. For me to recommend an Intel Arc GPU in 2025, they need to fix these driver problems immediately. It's a great GPU for the price. Matter of fact, I think it's definitely one of the best entry-level 1440p graphics cards, but until Intel completely fixes their driver issues, I can't confidently recommend buying their GPUs. Yet. So for now, you're better off going with Nvidia or AMD, and maybe even both at the same time. So if you want to see me use both Nvidia and AMD in the same PC to get 240 FPS in every game, watch this video next.